Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Josh, Josh, the farmer here. Uh, pretty bad low blow. Looks like there was a clash of heads in there too. So physically, how are you feeling after that one? I feel amazing right now. Uh, yeah, I feel on top of the world. Man, that Perth crowd. Wow. Just, yeah, wow. Obviously, you don't want to get fouled like that during the fight, but given how all, everything that played out in the fight and then how you ended it, just what are the emotions after this? How does this rank in, compared to all your other wins? Man, this is like right up there, top, top of the top of the, the, the feelings right now. Uh, just to, yeah, sort of Melsic, you know, did me a favor and, and, and added to it and played the villain sort of thing. You know, he came in, you know, he did that shove and then just, yeah, was just like, Obviously, he 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 played a big part in, in building this fight up of you know being the villain and sort of gave me a chance to be the the superhero in this story. So thank you to Melsic. Well, going off of that, did you know there was some sort of lingering issue before this the fight, or was that just him? You think in the in the moment with everyone, boom? No, not at all. At the fighter hotel, we were sweet. You know, we did bloods together. We were like we were bumping into each other plenty of times, and there was no animosity. I just feel um, maybe him obviously coming to my territory he felt like some some sort of way and was like yeah he was like oh these guys are booing me so he, he i feel like he, he sort of got that that you know he got he got rubbed the wrong way and then he the only real way to take it out was was on me so i don't blame him then during the fight it seems like he would throw a leg kick he and you would kind of motion to bring to keep coming and then he would throw back and he would say something back to you what were you what were you saying in there between each other uh, it was just more just like um like he'd kick i'd check i'd check he'd kick uh I, I i'd kick he'd check and then it was just more of just like a little bit of like head nods going like oh yeah yeah you got me okay yeah i checked your kick and it was just more of those sort of notions where it's like oh yeah come on well, go on kick harder you can kick harder let's go so did you end up getting your beer at the end it looks like you they 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 still haven't given me my beer and they say they don't have any beer here because everybody's working so I blame all you guys for working. Give me a beer. And the final one for me, uh, what do you want the rest of your year to look like moving forward? Um, I want to enjoy Perth for a little bit. So probably like, you know, get back in the gym two weeks, in two weeks time and get straight back into it. And uh, I just want to, yeah, I just want to, I want to fight. I want to be active, you know? So um, yeah, I'm ready to go. I, I want to fight at least two to three more times this year. Josh right here. Hey Mike. Um, for submission, does that for you, I guess, going forward, show to the opponents that, you know, there's more dimensions to your game here? And does that just add to, you know, the threat that you present to anyone you fight going forward now that they've seen you do it? Yeah, of course. Of course. This was always one of those uh, things that we tried to keep in our back pocket so that when we did have fights, people would just think, oh, he's just a striker of inorthodox. And then, you know, in another fight, oh, now he can switch stance. So he, he, he's a striker that can switch stance. And then, you know, just bringing out different cards, different tools in each fight. So next fight, they'll be like, all right, well, he can sub people. Maybe we can grind him up against the cage. But we've seen that in another fight. So it's like just showing different, you know, aspects of my game. Yeah. And you thanked him for the push. But, like, that stuff can be kind of dangerous, right? Like you saw with Jeremy Stevens and Dracar Close and stuff. Like, was there any concern, like, hey, bro, like, you're putting the, threat, the fight in jeopardy when you do stuff like that too. I don't think he pushed me hard enough to do that. It was more just like a little, little, you know, like a, yeah, just like a little love push, you know, like get, get out of my face, you're in my face sort of thing. It wasn't anything, uh, anything too malicious where I was like gonna jack my neck up or like anything like that. So, yeah. I know you mentioned how you were a huge fan of the UFC before you came here. Must feel pretty surreal to actually get a chance to fight in Australia, the stare down went viral, everybody was watching that. Now that it's all said and done, is it kind of cool to see it from the perspective of, hey, that fan's perspective of, hey, I'm actually doing this? To be honest, even just sitting here in front of all you guys, in front of these bright lights, is is it, it doesn't seem real. Like I, I, I watch other fighters' interviews and now I'm in this same spot thinking that there's monster energy drink in front of me, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm talking to you guys. So it's literally, yeah, everything that's happening right now, I just like, it doesn't seem real. And I think it's gonna take a little while for me to sort of like just sit back and just realize that, you know, yeah, I'm one of them guys. Yeah, I feel like there's an exciting aspect to your personality that you bring to the featherweight division. Is it kind of cool 
to be able to sort of bring bring some of the joy and some of the fun and some of the I guess uh, build up that you bring to your fights to the division because it's a it's a great division but obviously it's nice to have some new, new exciting fighters that could get fans pumped up. Yeah, I'm just again, I'm just uh, I'm just being me, you know. I'm just dialing Josh up to ten whenever it's fight week and just yeah. People can love me, people can hate me, but I'm, I'm going to be me. So, like, if it brings excitement, my smiley face, me being nice and happy all the time, if that brings excitement, you know, my style of fighting brings excitement, then beautiful, you know. So, it's, like, a, a little bit extra. So, it's, it's good, you know. I'm Again, I'm not trying to be anything that I'm not, and I'm just taking it all in and just dialing Josh up to 10. So, yeah. Um, take us through your walk up oh, over here. Josh. Take us through your walk up to the cage. You just look like you're loving the crowd, and um, how are you feeling in that moment? Oh man, I said like it, all of this, walking out, crowd going crazy, Australian fans, home soil, with my closest people walking me out. Ah, yeah, gets me. It's been going, but yeah, like it's it's surreal just to, to do it with all the important people in my life. You know, my friends and family are watching me. Uh, yeah, it's a one to tick off the bucket list for sure. Does living in the moment like that can't take away from the mental prep and the focus that you require once you get in that cage, or can you kind of switch between the two? No, nah, I switch between the two for sure. Like there's a there's obviously a fine line when that, that when that cage closes. What. Uh, I was explaining this in another interview that when the cage closes, nothing, nothing that happened in the past, an argument with the missus or, you know, something that has to happen or something in the future, like, oh, I got to pay this bill or I got to pay this fine. Like none of that shit matters. Like the only thing that matters is those next 15 minutes. And there's no real way to explain it besides feeling so alive in those next 15 minutes. So I'm able to switch between enjoying the crowd and lapping it up and dancing and smiling and, you know, high-fiving the crowd. And then when that door closes, it's no longer Josh, it's Kuya that's in there. So, um, Going back to that uh, kick in the cup, uh, you, can't, you didn't take all the time and when you back got to the end of the round, you mentioned you couldn't breathe. Do you feel there's a pride thing that fighters don't usually take the full time and they kind of come back before they, they should? <laughs> to be honest, it was just the Aussie crowd jamming me up to just get back in there and I just was like, you know what? I can breathe again, at least. Let's just go. You know what I mean? The, I was pretty sure it was like only 30 seconds left in the round. I was just like, you know what? Let's just finish this last 30 seconds. I can go have my breather in the corner. And yeah, so yeah. And last one from me. Did you think there was kind of something satisfying about um, choking him out when he the thro push at the press conference that like, got you on the throat sort of bit uh, serendipitous? Yeah, for sure. Like he grabbed my neck at the weigh-ins. I grabbed his neck in the fight. So you tell me which one's more important. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Josh, uh, have you had a chance to properly have a look and have a peek and make sure everything's intact? Yeah, the doctor actually, yeah, it's a bit weird. The doctor was like, yeah, in 13 years, I've never had to do this. And then I just like had to pull my pants down in front of him and was just like, yeah, it looks all normal to me. And he goes, he had to have a little bit of a feel. So, yeah, everything was all good. Um, they're all good guys. Don't worry about my nuts. They're all good. <laughs> Tell us about your uh, your instincts in the ring. I mean, one wrong move by your opponent and the fight can just change so quickly. Tell us about how you were able to pounce on him and get that rear naked choke. Again, it's just one of those one of those things that I just drill in the gym um, is is just like to go for the finish. My coach is is a, is a guy that his style is to always look for finishes in in any sport that we in any. Uh, in any martial art that we do, whether it's, you know, striking or whether it's grappling, we're always looking for the finish. So, um, yeah, my, that's my coach's style is to is to jump on submissions and, like, winning by points doesn't really matter in, like, jiu-jitsu comp. So he's, like, a guy that, like, always pushes for finishes. So just, yeah, it, it just, everything just, to be honest, everything just happened so quick. I, I, I jabbed him. He fell down. He turned to his knees. I felt it slide under his neck. And then I was like, man, this is actually deep. I heard him gurgling. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let go until, this, until the ref pulls me off. So that was my, my train of thought. And then obviously, again, the crowd was absolutely losing it when, when I had the, the arm around his neck. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to squeeze for dear life. Great win. Thank you. Uh, and Josh, uh, you talk about love for your teammates. Uh, unfortunately, one of your cornermen and uh, close teammates, Alan Philpot, lost a fight. Did that affect you at all going into this? Ha, the, the thing is, yeah, it did affect me. It did affect me. Um, the thing was is that like I rang him straight away and he just said straight away, like, don't worry about me. Focus on yourself. And uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I love you, Alan. <laughs> love you, Bill. And uh, I'll just finish it off with this. Uh, do you still miss being an electrician? <laughs> Again, this I'm saying this is a dream come true, standing in front of all you guys, fighting in, in the cage, and you want me to go back to pulling cable and, you know, doing PowerPoint and switchboards. Yeah. The, I, the Jiffy truck. <laughs> I prefer to punch people for a living. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you.